Welcome back, everyone, to Behind the Shield. I'm your host, Marco Estrella. Thank you for joining us today. So many stories broke over the last 30 days that the, the BTS team thought it would share with you the ones that caught their interest. On the show today, we're going to be talking about the MGM hack, airport systems being attacked, Microsoft leaking tons of data, and several other stories, including one that I cleverly dubbed the Clorox breach. Get it, guys? The Clorox? Anyway. We get it. We get yeah, it. All right. All right. <laughs> I feel it in my gut. It's going to be it's going to be a fun 60 minutes. <laughs> um, by the way, if any of you listeners out there are new to the show, welcome. Um, and if you like what you hear today, hopefully you, you come back. But uh, if you want to catch up on past episodes, all you have to do is uh, go to virtualguardian.com and you'll find past episodes. And um, for those who would like to listen to us on podcasts in their car or anywhere else, uh, you can find us on most podcast services. Okay. Uh, to help me navigate our hot topics today, and um, I call upon my trusty panel of cybersecurity experts, and they are Patrick Naum, Virtual Guardian's CEO. Hi, Pat. Hi, everyone. Glad to be back. And from our office in Minnesota, Bill Strube, president of Virtual Guardian. How's it going, Bill? Hello. hello. Good to be here. Great. So, um, gents, I was going to ask you about your, you know, your back to school and how's it going, how your week was going. But uh, I flipped the, the script on you and uh, there's some breaking news. And you probably know what I'm referring to today yeah. if, you, if you've read the news this morning. But uh, Bloomberg... Uh, just a few hours before the taping of this show, announced that Cisco has purchased Splunk for a whopping twenty-eight billion dollars. Uh, that's Is as the, big as a fourth yeah. try, second try. I don't remember anymore. It's been, Was it's it been in, in the works for a while? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Nice well, thirty percent uh, premium too for the stock the stockholders. So right, right. So I heard one hundred and fifty-seven dollars a share. Correct. Yeah, twenty-eight billion and change, probably. Twenty-eight but, billion, and Cisco's so, share price went down a little bit, of course. Did it? And what's your what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it, it's gonna cause a little bit of market shift. Uh, how are the other sim companies uh, gonna react to this? You think, or well, other manufacturers? I think the other manufacturers are um, probably loving it. Personally, my opinion. Um, Cisco has a track record of some certain successes as well as some uh, some acquisitions that didn't go quite as uh, as planned. And so uh, I think that the other sim manufacturers and other folks that uh, run in adjacent spaces will probably spear a little bit of uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, some FUD factor. Um, what does it mean for Splunk to be, become part of Cisco? Mm -hmm. And... Personally, though, I think Cisco realizes and sees the value of Splunk. I don't think they're going to mess this one up. I think it's going to go just fine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Cisco is often criticized, right, for for acquisitions, transactions. To to your point, uh, Bill. You know, financially, I think it, it makes sense for for Cisco. They needed to to shake um, something up because you know, they're, if you look at their share price, you know, it hasn't had this, the same activity as as others in, in in you know in the industry um so you know they're definitely looking for 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 more news traction they recognize the you know splunk's uh footprint in in security right in, in, in ingesting all that data uh, so it makes sense strategically for cisco to to do that and everything's going to be in the execution following that right i mean it's going to be how they integrate uh you know how you know devil's in the details usually you know they, they've had su some success in the past but for the most part you know a lot of the acquisitions were were struggles and this one is a big one uh, right so we'll see time will tell all right well i don't really i haven't wrapped my mind my head around this one yet um how are they going to present it does it uh is it going to come in, you know, all in the box when you open up uh, the firewall? Is it going to have well, some capabilities and whatnot? And Chuck Robbins said two things. Uh, you know, he doesn't think there's going to be regulatory issues with because, you know, Splunk operates in, in China uh, as well. Right. So he's not uh -huh. anticipating 
regulatory issues, but then again, what is, you know, I don't know what guarantees or what levels of conversations were had with the government, but he's not worried about that. And the other thing is, um, you know, what's going to be interesting to see is, you know, from, from our perspective, at least it's the partner program, right? Clearly, you know, Cisco has a mature partner program. It's relatively rich. Um, you know, however, not all Cisco partners do deal with Splunk. Those that do will probably see benefit because Splunk is not really, at least from our experience and what our observations, is not really a partner-friendly organization. So I think there's going to be benefit uh, for Splunk's market share potentially in solution offering if, uh, you know, as Cisco leverages, if they leverage their partner program. Okay. Great. <clears throat> okay. Well, thanks, guys. Um, Any other so surprises was, for us, uh, Marco? No, no. That was just oh, a little uh, amuse-bouche, as they say there, in French. There was one other announcement today before oh. you move forward, and that sure. is uh, that Talon, uh, it's a uh, secure web browser that competes with Island. Uh, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with that space, but it's a way to basically secure uh, the end user experience of using a browser and only allow it to connect to various systems or, or, or pre-approved systems. But Talon is in talks with Palo Alto. It looks like that transaction is going to go through uh, much smaller in size. I think it's about 600 million, but uh, that was announced today as well. Well, Talon's buying Palo? <laughs> yeah, I, they wish. No, the other way around. <laughs> all right, all right. And further uh, to your, your previous intro comment, uh, Marco, you know, uh, how is back to school going? I could tell you the hackers are back from vacation. It, that's uh, that's true, and we got proof to uh, breaking news just before the show, or recently, very very hot off the press anyway. Um, and listen, uh, another little thing before we get into the 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 the, the topics that um, uh, interested uh, us this month, this past month, uh, Bill, you, um, um, I, I introduced you as a uh, as a president of Virtual Guardian and not co-founder of Navalogic. Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, what's yeah. up? <laughs> Well, tell us a little. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, tell our audience uh, why that is. Yeah, uh, definitely excited about the uh, the change. So, uh, for those that are familiar and uh, those who are not, just to recap, we were we became part of uh, Virtual Guardian in December of 2021. Uh, we we basically operated as Navalogic until earlier this month. But um, in order to align ourselves for North American growth expansion. And to bring the uh, the entire Virtual Guardian family together, we're rebranding and becoming Virtual Guardian here in the United States as well. So uh, we've got uh, we've got all sorts of new things in the works, um, not just shirts and uh, new logos, but more offerings that we can bring to clients and to extend the value of the entire organization um, to our clients and beyond. So very exciting. Excellent. Well, we're uh, very happy to to have you guys join us uh, uh, for having met your team down there. A solid, solid team in Minnesota. Love those guys down there. And uh, I would say down there, but I think uh, Patrick was the one you were you were referring to. Yeah. They're actually we're the same latitude. We're on the same latitude. Yeah, yeah but we yeah. always have that. You know, USA is all is underneath, so it's down there. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's surprising. It's uh, it's pretty much the same latitude. Uh, another uh, quick note. Uh, uh, next week is our uh, annual uh, Virtual Guardian slash Navalogic uh, for the last time, but uh, slash Navalogic's uh, annual golf tournament. And I'm actually okay. heading uh, heading west mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to attend. Looking forward to that. What's the charity uh, this year? We always support a charity, uh, yeah. Bill. We support uh, University of Minnesota uh, M, M Health Fairview's Children's Pediatric Cancer Research Group. So the uh, the outlook looks like we're going to raise somewhere between twenty two and twenty five thousand uh, dollars for that charity, which is up considerably from last year. Last year was It'll our first, record, I guess. Yeah, last year was uh, twelve thousand. This year we've uh, wow. more than doubled it. Is what it looks like. So um, it's going to be a great event. Looking forward to that. Yeah, to see our partners and clients in great numbers, always, uh, always fun. So, what course is it? It is the Royal Golf Course. Not, not Royal as in an official Royal, but uh, it's it's a 
I'll just say that uh, Kent and the team over there are royalty to us. So, but okay. it's the Royal Golf Course. Very good. All right, very good. Lots, lots of news there. Um, let's get to our first topic, shall we? Uh, Bill, you're up first with, uh, you know, and I was going to say with arguably the biggest piece of cybersecurity news until the Splunk story uh, broke, but um, MGM and Caesars. Uh, they, they're being hacked big time. Uh, they're having serious trouble. It's going all the way to guests, not even being able to access their hotel rooms. Uh, the key cards aren't working and it's going all the way to, to that level. So can you tell us what happened? What's going on, please? Yeah, I can tell you as far as uh, what we know and what's been released, I, I don't think mm-hmm. the full story is uh, is going to be out. And I think that they're going to be able to write a book with this one, at least, uh, maybe even a full movie, but, um, as you mentioned, MGM and Caesars are both being uh, attacked by hackers. A uh, couple different groups, one called Scattered Spider, uh, that um, that seemed that they've teamed up with another group called Black Hat, the Black Hat Ransomware Group. So it's kind of unique in the sense that you see two different threat actors actually um, working like business associates as it comes to these two uh, attacks. Um, you mentioned Caesars as well as MGM. MGM... Uh, did not pay the ransom, and as a result, their their uh, operations have been severely impacted. Caesars, on the other hand, though, was originally requested to pay about thirty million in a ransom, and they paid approximately half that. They paid fifteen million in ransom, uh, and they weren't terribly impacted. Uh, some of their loyalty information was released, as well as a couple other pieces of sensitive information were still made public, but their operations continued to move smoothly. MGM That's why I found out there. that you're a high roller, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I only gamble with friends, Patrick. That's uh, that's my rule. But um, MGM across uh, across all their properties, it's not just Las Vegas, but Atlantic City, other locations, uh, have been essentially shut down for the most part for a good good period of last week. Um, they did not pay the requested approximately 30 to 50 million in ransom. And, and Marco, you already said it, their, their, their website, slot machines, ATMs, front desk, key cards, reservation systems, parking, all of it has been impacted by this particular attack. Wow. Um, the immediate thing that we can say from a loss of value is not only their daily revenue, which is still being tallied, but just on the stock price, uh, they've lost over 850 million in stock value, and that was approximately six percent as of two days ago. The Not the price really. is even lower today than it was then. Um, and then you know the the recovery effort, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like. So um, definitely a big attack. I'm gonna just going to try to run through some of the highlights of their the, the timeline. Yeah. Um, from a timeline perspective, I think realistically, this probably goes into August or early July. This is a social engineering attack that actually started the access into the uh, MGM and suspected in the Caesars um, uh, attack as well. Um, people pulling information from LinkedIn, contacting the IT desk, and asking or requesting assistance from IT to gain access into the network appears as though that's the the cause or the initial entry point for these uh, these breaches. Um, that said, going back to September seventh, that is roughly when Caesars decided to pay the uh, the fifteen million in ransom. Uh, they were essentially left alone after that point. September eleventh, MGM released a statement saying that they have a cybersecurity incident that has affected some of the company's systems. Uh, on the 12th, so they continued to be, uh, that guests continue to be able to access their hotel rooms and front desk is ready to assist the guests as needed. Uh, also on the 12th, the main website re- was reported as going down, which is also where all the reservation systems happen. Mm-hmm. Um, on the 13th, some attribution was given to, uh, the Black Hat ransomware gang, um, also on the 13th, that's where uh, Scattered Spider, the, the hacking group Scattered Spider, was also attributed to this. Uh, on the 13th, Moody's released a statement talking about the negative impact that this is going to have to MGM uh, as a, from a stock perspective. 
and highlighted some of uh, the key risks that were um, identified. Uh, on the 18th, it made, became very clear that uh, Black Cat and Scatter Spider were working together. And also on the 18th, uh, IT services um, uh, confirmed that, um, that Okta, which, was in, which is a technology that was supposed to help with uh, identities uh, and accessing, uh, pardon me, with identities and helping provide secure access, that the ransomware groups were actually in Okta and using Okta as a way to uh, get additional information. Now, I want to point out this isn't a, a failure of Okta, it's a failure of actually being able to uh, have at the very basic level, the help desk level way of validating that the end user is who they, they say they are when right. they make the initial phone call. Security and observability are crucial for the success of your company. But do you have all the information you need to protect your organization from potential threats? Introducing our latest ebook from Solsys, Convergence of Observability and Security, the benefits and approaches to better and safer applications and services. With this comprehensive guide, you'll gain valuable insights into the latest security and observability practices, including how to detect and prevent attacks, gain in-depth visibility, and secure your data. Don't leave your company's security to chance. Download our ebook today and gain the knowledge you need to stay ahead of the game. Visit our website now at solstice.ca. But, so, but Bill, uh, I, you know, Okta was, uh, the Okta code was leaked, uh, breached, uh, not even a year ago. Do you think that has anything to do with it? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, could be wrong. I, again, we're going to find out a lot more over time. But right. uh, it's it's a it's a big attack that uh, that was really stemmed from social engineering at the very beginning. I think mm -hmm. this is um, this is something that is continuously happening. It's just, it's not a Caesars. It's not an MGM. Uh, there were at least three other large companies that were um, uh, reported that were kind of in the same time frame that uh, Scatter Spider was targeting. Um, the fact that there was no validation for end user calls is uh, is obviously a concern, but uh, to think that a $34 billion company can be taken down yeah. with a 10 minute phone call to the IT support desk is uh, is quite alarming. It, it's nuts because if you look at the casinos, yeah. they're, they're targeted continuously by fraud, right? On the premises and, you know, digitally as well. You know, as they're very, as we know, very rich and, and full of means, you know, they must be continually, continuously attacked. So did you guys ever hear of any other breach that happened in the casinos in the past that we know of? Because there probably were, but maybe not to this level. Yeah, uh, there, there have been other security incidents, um, for sure. Uh, I'd have to go back, but it, I want to say in 2019 and 2021, Top of top of mind, there was uh, some casino breaches as well, but oh, yeah. okay, not to this scale. Because they're, I mean, they're prime targets, right? Fifteen, I mean, it's, 15 uh, it's million. It's old joke. Why, why'd you rob the bank? Because that's where the money is. Well, it's the same thing for the casinos. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Pretty Fifteen much. million dollar payday for the cyber criminals, right there. Mm -hmm. One, one, uh, one swift uh, fell swoop. Fifteen million. Wow. So we uh -oh. could we could pretty much bet that. You know, our Crown Corporation, Lotto Quebec, is also uh, on high alert, right, uh, Marco? What do you think? Was that the pun intended? No, no, no. Uh, not <laughs> we could pretty much bet. <laughs> no, because... Uh, uh, yeah, La Lotto Quebec... We have Quebec. a state-run casino and lottery, right? Uh, Absolutely. Here. Absolutely. So um, I'm pretty sure everyone's in high alert. I'm pretty... Yeah, no, you're, you're right. Uh, well, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Bill, for that first story. Um, what are you going to do? I mean, train your employees. I guess that's pretty much the only thing that we can say. You know, if it's uh, if it's IT giving up access to the network, that's that's pretty bad. That's prime yeah. target. People well, think the, it's always the VPs and the the, the C levels, but the <laughs> IT guys hold the keys, right? Yeah, th there is an interesting component to this as well, which is not part of the the main story, but. Um, uh, the, the Black Cat ransomware group is is actually basically providing live feedback at how poor the response is for the incident response plan. Like a uh, newscast. Yeah. Like a live newsfeed. Okay. Exactly. Wow. So, so not only are they 
causing severe financial pain and uh, operational pain to everyone involved, the uh, MGM, its guests, employees, and so on. But then they're talking about how bad the actual response is, which is just making the matters worse. So that's kind of a, a tangent to the story, but certainly a slap in the face, uh, salt in the wound, if you will. Do, do we know who's involved in terms of the defense? Because, I mean, with the money they have, they they could probably... They're paying the top consultants out there, and the they probably are Mandiant firms, so and Mandiant and Company, probably. Uh, they they do list um, one particular firm, uh, who I'm not going to repeat that that they've been very critical of their response as well. Okay. Um, but uh, all you got to do is Google the story. You'll if, okay, if you fine. want that nugget, you can find it. All right. Thank you, Bill. You uh, we're going to move on to Patrick uh, last week. In downtown Montreal, Virtual Guardian held a an event. Uh, you wanted to circle back and give us a little yeah. bit of uh, feedback. So go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Marco. I mean, I, it was worth highlighting because it, it was the type of event that wasn't about us. Because what happened is, you know, over time, and it's it's really timely with what we're seeing here in terms of incident response, you know, what we heard from Bill, is that, you know, we often think that, you know, a, a response is you know, most, for the most part, technical, right? You, you got to contain, you got to send your specialists in, get the job done. And it's a technical intervention, if you will. But when you think think through the whole process, and if you look at how an incident response plan or professional incident response plan is built, well, you have all sorts of components about, of, you know, the legal aspects, the communication aspects, the ins- cyber insurance aspects, and technology uh, is just part of the chain, part of the process and, and services as well. So we we actually, uh, this was from m- months ago, we came up with an idea with the team here to come up with an event that would represent each area of a typical incident response team, but also how e- each of those organizations could proactively, get involved proactively to help clients b- before an incident happens to either mitigate an incident, you know, reduce or eliminate the possibility, but also, you know, knowing how to react. So we actually created a panel. So we had a firm of uh, lawyers that was represented, uh, their main partner that was in charge of of technology uh, litigation, but also happened to be their DPO. uh, So responsible for all of PII management. Uh, We also had uh, a public relations firm, the biggest one in Canada, uh, talking, you know, and, and we often talk about these types of firms as, you know, managing the press, communications, marketing, but a lot of the the work they do is in crisis management. Uh, we also had a cyber insurance broker, you know, so it was an interesting discussion where he he talked about, you know, how, how do you how do you make sure you have the right coverage? Uh, what type of companies should apply for coverage? What are the insurance companies asking for to get coverage? Uh, and, and basically helping clients navigate. And then uh, there was uh, us as well, uh, Arnaud from our GRC practice. And I was animating the panel and you know asking, I was the, the MC and uh, the host asking questions and entertaining conversations with the, the various guests. So we had a full house. Um, you know, typically in these events, you probably have a 50% uh, rate of people showing that registered. We were probably at around 70%. And the ones that did not show were replaced by people that uh, signed up uh, at the door. So it was really, really great. Uh, we have a lot of feedback uh, since the event, a lot of follow-ups with clients. And, you know, if you look at uh, the room and the people that were there, a lot of them were, you know, I think what will come out of it of this is tabletop exercises, simulations, uh, inventories of what they have in terms of documentation and and, and infrastructure. So there's a lot of follow-ups all week. We've been busy uh, uh, following up with these clients. So it was very, very positive. And I think the main reason why we had a full house is because of the the panelists, right? If had we run an, an event on our own, we wouldn't have had, had half or even a quarter of the people that were there. So I think there's value to making cybersecurity and cyber defense, you know, more than just uh, solutions and, and, and technical services. So this this was the, the proof. So really, really nice. happy at that. Yeah, I, nice. I think that when you hear from your peers versus, uh, I mean, we've been in cybersecurity for myself 25 years, Patrick, probably roughly the same. Marco, maybe a little less, you're a little, little younger than us, I think. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just a little. Just a but little. um, but you know, when you have a vendor hat on, people people value your information. I'm not taking anything away from from the knowledge that we've acquired over the years, but when you hear from your peers and how it's being applied, uh, and um as well as other industry experts, that that panel approach is definitely the right way. So that sounds like it was a, a great event. It was, it was. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, so it's my turn now. Um, I picked a story that um, actually, you know, annoyed me a little bit, uh, and I wanted to talk about it. So um, it was uh, announced that TransUnion may have leaked uh, close to sixty thousand. Uh, PII uh, data, so um, files, basically, PII files. So it was allegedly hacked. Um, I went on their website. Uh, they have a statement where they say that that's not, uh, that's not true. They took it uh, very seriously. They called outside help. They investigated. And uh, they're saying that... Um, the data must have been must have come from another source, a third party, if you will. So they, in their statement, this this statement you can go on uh, transunion.com, and you can read the statement. They say that the data that was leaked is not presented in the in the same format that they typically present their data. Hence, their conclusion is that it was it was coming from somewhere else. So. Uh, I'm reading this and I'm and the reason why I'm annoyed is that uh, this is outrageous like passing the buck in this fashion is outrageous to me in the sense that uh you know uh, it doesn't matter you're you are the 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 custodian of this data okay you had it you had it first you share it with some partners and okay they get they get hacked so they are the the culprits but ultimately everything points to you you're the one that's in the news you're the ones that we know you're the ones that collected the data in the first place um you know so maybe a third party risk assessment uh transunion perhaps so it really you know kind of got me so basically the little the, the fine print details in this is that, that it was uh, a hacker called us dod uh, that published uh, about three terabytes of uh, data on the dark web uh, forum which uh, those three terabytes uh, are equivalent to that 60,000 um, files of citizens. And for those who aren't familiar with TransUnion, um, basically they are a credit reporting uh, service in the US that and it has uh, credit scores on almost every American citizen and um, some Canadian citizens as well. And they are closely linked to uh, Equifax, which is um, another uh, credit uh, company, which has had similar trouble. So those two companies, Equifax and TransUnion, are prime targets. They're continuously in the news for uh, cybersecurity issues, and I'm 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 really annoyed. And and if I'm if I go even a little bit further, seeing as um, you know, I, I'm based in uh, Quebec. We had in 2019 the biggest the biggest hack of our province history, which was Desjardins. Desjardins was is a giant uh, financial institution here. It has um, over four million uh, citizens' accounts, and it was a malicious insider. And all those four million accounts were hacked. Uh, basically, and well, one of the the data was transferred. Yes. Yeah, it, it was an internal job, like you said. It was fraud essentially, and then data was transferred away and sold to third parties. Is what happened, right? And one of the compensations that Desjardins gave the four point two million customers was TransUnion and Equifax yeah. credit score monitoring. So they essentially say, oh, well, you know, now you can get uh, your your score monitored by these trustworthy companies. Meanwhile, they're every year or so, it seems that they're in the news for, yeah, for 2020 issues. was Equifax and then trans. It's crazy. I mean, it's like, it's your last line of, uh, you know, defense in terms of personal information. Out of the fire, into the frying pan. The number one challenge facing companies of all sizes and across all industries isn't a specific kind of attack. 
It's the depth and breadth of cybersecurity resources required to monitor, prevent, and respond to attacks against their business. Companies need help. They need expertise, they need technical capabilities, and they need a partner they can trust. Virtual Guardian has been a trusted provider of cybersecurity guidance and solutions for more than 25 years. If you're facing mounting challenges in both technical knowledge and human ingenuity, partner with Virtual Guardian to protect your business. Full stop. Visit us today at virtualguardian.com. So that was it for uh, for my topic. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Bill, uh, Microsoft made some uh, made the news for the wrong reasons. What happened? Well, the the uh, the long story short is they they didn't secure their own uh, container blob, but uh, they they leaked thirty eight terabytes of of uh, private company data. Uh, this was the Microsoft AI research team that leaked this data. And they uploaded um, training data, per the story, training data containing open source code and AI models for image recognition. Um, in that same, do- same data storage blob were uh, the full backups of two computers containing sensitive personal data, including passwords to Microsoft services, secret keys, uh, more than 30,000 Teams messages uh, from over 350 Microsoft employees. Um, now, this was all in an Azure blob store, uh, but the reason it was exposed or possibly was exposed to more than what they wanted was uh, there were links to this data for other users via GitHub. Uh, <laughs> and all of this data on GitHub was a direct link to not just read only, but basically full access to this data, uh, read, write, delete, change, modify, you name it, they had access to it. This was the train an AI model? This is, yeah, you've got it. For training for image recognition. So, I mean, to your question, Patrick, is could have they potentially um, poisoned the AI data, the, the training data? or skewed the training data, the, the answer is it's very possible. Um, Microsoft mm-hmm. saying that uh, didn't happen, but it's, it's certainly within the realm of possibility. Um, and this information has, has been out there since 2020. So really? access to this information has been over the past three years. Uh, for those who are curious of the, the, the uh, you know, what caused this, this is a result of an Azure feature called shared access signatures is basically a token, um, which grants access to the Azure data store. Um, The way that it was configured was for full access, they could have configured it with limited access, but they they didn't do that. So that's what caused that particular data to be exposed. Um, And so it's it's interesting that Microsoft did did indeed have this, this particular leak. Uh, it was Wiz is all over the story. So for folks that are familiar with cloud native uh, yeah. app, uh, yeah, seen app. Uh, Wiz is all over the story. I'm assuming that Wiz probably found this, is my guess, mm-hmm. uh, and helped Microsoft remediate this particular issue. But um, of course, yeah. The, the uh, statement from Microsoft, uh, though, was no customer data was exposed and no other internal services were put at risk because of this issue. So just personal information from employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got it. <laughs> Didn't I read uh, on that article that uh, there was a it was leaked of a because of an employee a mistake? It, it was completely a mistake. Yeah, this was okay. nothing malicious. There's no hacker involved. This was, it was a human error. This is human error. This is misconfiguration. Um, it's a common theme uh, today. Well, so far. Um, so far, yeah. exactly. The technology did not fail. It was a human problem that created this. So, right. right. And uh, human error, which is one of the top reasons for breaches every year since the dawn of time. I, I mean, think. They, you know, you cut me off on one of the subjects I had, Marco, there, but it's, it's related to this, right? It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's ransomware attacks now that are proliferating on uh on teams and other platforms that we're not used to right and um listen if we have time later 
We'll see. We'll see if we have time. The show is uh, moving along smoothly. Yeah. I want to go to a story. Well, Patrick, you have a story about uh, some problems in the Canadian airports. Well, I mean, if you've gone through the most Canadian airports, especially Montreal, prior to this, you would have noticed that it's still slow. <laughs> Understaffed since the pandemic, uh, yes. lines are long, yes. both leaving and coming out of the country, uh, very complicated. Um, I was listening to interviews uh, before this happened. This happened, this hack happened this weekend, but the week leading into to this, there was a big issue in terms of lineups at the airport and the um, you know border uh, control uh, was mentioning that they're understaffed because apparently uh, at the beginning of, of school year, we have, a, we have to give out a lot of work visas. Uh, sorry, uh, student visas, uh, my apologies. Right. And they're really busy in the back office taking care of all these visa requests. So people that are just traveling in and out of the States or internationally are having to wait long lines. So guess what happened last weekend? Well, there was a DDoS attack on all the Canadian airports. Uh, it was documented as being uh, launched by No Name 057, a Russian group. Uh, that literally flooded all uh, websites, uh, all uh, border services. Um, so it's interesting because they initially, as is the case most of the time, it starts by being announced publicly as a an IT issue. And, you know, what is it? Nine times out of 10, a couple of days later, it, it ends up being a hack, right? And this was the case because the, Newspapers were all over it a couple of days after, and it was confirmed as being a uh, an attack. What's what's fascinating though, and 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 we didn't have a lot of information. I think the uh, border control refused to comment at this stage. Um, was that if you come to Montreal, we have more and more fa facial recognition systems, and we also have these kiosks like the Nexus kiosks or. Uh, uh, what are they called, Bill? Uh, Clear and all those kiosks yeah, yep, yep. for TSA uh, pre-check and whatnot. So we have the same coming back in the country. And they were all down, right? But the question, uh, and then, so they're saying it's a DDoS. Yeah, but these systems are supposedly isolated from the internet, right? That's how it was, you know, a few specialists were commenting. Says these these are supposed to be isolated from the internet. So how, how did the DOS attack affect those consoles? Because they were literally not working anymore. So you had hours and hours of people waiting in line. People were taking pictures of in line, it wasn't moving. So I think there's more to this. We're going to hear more about this over the next few days, or, or maybe not. Hopefully we will. But clearly there was a penetration uh, if those systems were affected, because DDoS alone could not have justified those border uh, control uh, systems going down. Um, so that's uh, that's what happened just this almost, weekend. It sounds almost like they got access to the internal, disrupt the switches, disrupt um, something along those lines. So. Yeah. so airport systems apparently were not affected, but I mean, it was literally targeting everything related to border control. So it is critical infrastructure, right? So it's it's actually the, the the biggest and most impactful critical infrastructure attack in Canada that was launched in Canada because airports are critical infrastructure. And uh, and to your point, Bill, I mean, I would suspect that there's there's probably an underlying uh, intrusion uh, in there. So too early to tell. This happened, I think, Saturday, Sunday, right, Marco? Uh, too early to tell. Uh, yeah. You know the the after effects uh, of this, and what what else is uh, lurking in our uh, border uh, control uh, environment? Uh, so that's that's the latest there. So well, it's not at all moment. Getting closer and closer to control tower equipment and computers no, and nothing systems. Was, nothing was reported uh, related. I to know that, but, not this time, but but now Canada is it, it's a different beast, right? It's not. Mm -hmm. you know, it's an additional service on top of uh, of airports, so they have their own systems, and All hopefully right. they're isolated. But uh, but it you know it's an airport, critical infrastructure. To to your point, you know what, what else is uh, up for grabs out there, right? We don't yeah. we don't know. 
So All right. it's not, thanks, uh, Pat. Not the Patrick, best. That's not gonna uh, it's not gonna inhibit your ability to to bring some Mars bars back though when you're at a golf event next week, is it? Are you are you out of uh, bars? The last time yeah, you were, we're out, we're out of Mars bars. Yeah. Oh, you're out because you weren't out last time I was there. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll look into it. It's Halloween's coming, so maybe there's more inventory. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's on the break. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, good. Um, I want to touch Hold on, on Marco. this. You're sure. not curious. What the Mars bars? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I've I've heard this story before. I think it's uh, it's something to do with it being uh, th there's no Mars bars being sold in the U.S. or illegal no. to, oh, to bring to them over. With, we have to put up with the Milky Way down here. No Mars bar. Wow. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that that was like I couldn't believe it. Now, you you if you would have bet, you know, a hundred bucks or so uh, on on me trying to guess. Whether you had bars, bars or not, I would have lost that bet for sure. And now your your Bill's Mars Mule is that what yep. I know? Is that what the... you could say that? I, I don't I don't know if we're in trouble or not. Uh, Jen was just uh, yeah okay. Master yeah, control, 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 master control. control. Saying to change the topic. Change the yeah. topic. If I ask for more rowbacks, I might be in trouble. But for Mars, Mars <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jen from the console is probably going to be. Sending, uh, you know, Homeland Security messages. I'm going to get a, a nice welcome uh, sometime next week. <laughs> okay, um, we're getting close to the end. I have one more uh, topic, um, which is uh, concerning manufacturing. And it, um, I thought it was pretty, pretty clever with my Clorox breach. Come on. Um, so Clorox, I, I, you know, I thought that was pretty funny, but Clorox is, is definitely not laughing. They suffered a, a cyber attack this past week and production was stopped on most of their cleaning products, uh, including Clorox bleach, of course. So, so no more, uh, no more cleansing for COVID. Well, yeah. yeah, that's the concern. <laughs> we, oh man, I won't, I won't touch that one. No, you <laughs> open the door. I'm not going through it. Um, the, uh, the article that I read, um, and I looked into said that Clorox detected the breach in August and, uh, last week they said they had it under control. So you, you, you know, calculate how many days that is. It could be up to 30 days, uh, of dealing with the, with the problems. And they said it had contained the threat, but it uh, has not been able to bring manufacturing back to the normal level. And Clorox also stated that it will ramp up production over time. So you can see this, this whole delay in, in manufacturing production um, due to this. It doesn't say what type of attack it was, the, the articles that I read, but um, the way that they descri describe the facts, it does seem to point to ransomware. But... And um, with an impact on uh, probably IoT devices or from oh. IoT devices affecting the production line. Yep. That's <laughs> right. So to end the story is the company's share lost 2% of its value when it was announced. So, uh, Patrick, what are you? You're the CEO of Clorox and you lose 2%. Are you uh, climbing the walls? Are you uh, breaking stuff in your office? What are you, what are you doing? Well, I mean, the, the, your share price fluctuates by more than that in a given week, right? Unrelated to the event. Uh-huh. Fairly. Like, like today, like the last three days have been terrible on the market. I don't know if you've seen. But what about the trend since then? You say 2%, but what is it now? Maybe it's continuously declined yeah, since. Yeah, I only saw that it went down that first day. But what I, what I wanted to get to, uh, Patrick, was... Yeah. Um, uh, it doesn't, I I'm with you. It doesn't seem to be too much. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's, um, akin to, uh, taking a ruler and, and slapping a student on the fingers, you know, for doing something bad in class. Right. So it doesn't seem like it, it will it be a wake up call for Clorox, Clorox management to shore up their cybersecurity? Is that well, enough to say, Whoa, you know, because when I think back about MGM, uh, they lost 850 million, and uh, in sh in share price, and the ransom was 30 million. So they're probably saying, "What the heck are we thinking, guys? You know, this is a mathematical equation. Pay the 30 million; it's better than losing almost a billion dollars." And, and the hackers know this, right? They, they correct, they correct. Yeah. So the hackers, are, it, yeah. it's just a matter of time before they ask for 100 million or 200 million. So 
I'm, um, I'm, I'm looking at the, the share price. So the peak for this year was uh, 52 week high, 178. But they yeah. actually peaked for the second time. So the first time was in May. Second time, they peaked in August, August 3rd at 166. And now they've been going down since. They're tra- trending at 136 right now. It's the lowest uh, lowest in last the fi- last 52 weeks. So, so if they you, lost you $30 for, for, on their for share. Fluctu- normal fluctuations, they are at a 52-week low right now. Okay. So, so it's related. So, they're, su- so they're suffering. So maybe, maybe and, and that's after all, all, they're getting the message. A lot of that's in the last week. I mean, they were at 150 a week ago, and now they're uh, they're down to 130, 136. Yeah, I guess people, people are probably not believing that they're back to normal or whatnot. You know, they didn't buy yep. into their, you know, the well, maybe the they event. just announced their earnings are going to be much lower for the next quarters because awesome. they can't sell product, they can't move boxes. So the market yep. cap. Right now, it's at sixteen billion. So you could probably, you know, they lost they lost a good chunk of their market cap, billions. Protect yourself from the growing threat of ransomware attacks with Virtual Guardian. Keep your sensitive data secure. Identify vulnerabilities ahead of time, and know that Virtual Guardian is focused on your security, so you can focus on what really matters: growing your business. At the intersection of people, process, and technology, we're guarding your critical mass, achieving digital resilience, and protecting what matters most. Virtual Guardian, unmatched security expertise, fueled by trust. For our audience out there, um, I don't think that our audience has Clorox shares. Maybe they do, I don't know, but uh, bottom line is probably look for your cleaning products and your bleach to cost more in the next uh, weeks or months. Probably a nice little hike there on the bottle of Clorox. And honestly, maybe MGM and Clorox aren't bad buys right now. Just just throwing it out there. Uh, Fundamentals are solid, I guess, right? (laughs) Buy buy low, sell high. You got it. We should put a disclaimer. uh, We are not. We're uh, not professionals at stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are not professional traders. Don't take our financial advice. Correct. Correct. (laughs) Please do not. Please don't. We're, we're, We're just gamblers. (laughs) all right guys thank you very much uh we're nearing the end of the show thanks for your input nice topics uh, this month a lot of activity and uh this is september in nine days it will be Cybersecurity month and you know guys that Cybersecurity month is uh for virtual guardian anyway and and the industry it's it's chock full of uh activity trade shows events webinars um posts uh, social media posts uh so uh look forward to that next week um and i'm sure that when we uh do uh, next month's uh, behind the shield we're gonna have tons of stories to choose from well, unfortunately probably if if i may jump in so sure. we decided to uh to jump on the bandwagon there's going to be a cybersecurity special in one of our leading newspapers here in montreal that's coming out saturday Okay. So we, we, the reason why, well, number one, they're doing the special be- leading up to Cybersecurity Month, so mm-hmm. they wanted to do it as early as possible. So it's like end of September before uh, October, and where we've jumped on the bandwagon. So there's going to be an article uh, that that signed. Uh, I was interviewed by a, a journalist, so uh, uh, you'll get uh, it'll be all, all over social on uh, on Saturday. Uh, Jen is on it, uh, but. You're gonna have to leverage, uh, you know, Chat GPT translation or, or uh, oh, it's a French French article or Google Translate, yeah, because it's gonna oh, be yeah. just in French. It's our leading French newspaper, so uh, uh, stay tuned for that. It's a short article. See, it's gonna be easily translated uh, if you run it through your your various tools. Very good. Are you signing Excellent. copies uh, on Sunday? You're signing copies for. Uh... Bill and myself, any, anything you want, whatever you want, Marco. <laughs> All right, that, thanks, uh, thanks, Patrick. Uh, so I want to thank uh, both our panelists today, uh, Bill Strube, Patrick Naum. Thank you very much for your usual collaboration on the show, and to everybody listening. If you've missed part of today's event, uh, the show is going to be made available um, on most podcast services out there sometime next week. 
So uh, look for us there. And of course, uh, for previous episodes, as I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find uh, those at virtualguardian.com. We've actually uh, been noticing um, ever since uh, we were kind of spread on podcasts, been noticing a nice increase in downloads. So I want to thank all our audience for supporting us. That's really cool. Um, Hopefully that means that... uh, you get a little bit of uh, value out of our podcast and and a little bit of entertainment at the same time. And uh, hopefully we get to see you uh, next month for the next show. Um, So big thank you for all of your support. And remember everybody, uh, when you're behind a shield, you're ahead of the game. Take care everybody. Thank Thank you so long. Bye.